Hey everyone, welcome to Yoga Land's Yoga Teacher Companion. I'm your host, Jason Crandall. And I'm gonna tell you something about me, which is I think that one of the reasons that I'm very good with helping other, people's pre other people prepare for postures um, and sequencing is because very few yoga postures have ever come easy for me. I have always had a tighter, more restricted body in large part because of the athletics that I grew up from a really young age playing. So as a student, I've been really extremely diligent and really persistent, but I've had to learn, I've had to be innovative, um, I've had to in countless classes figure out what to do when I couldn't do the harder thing, okay? And so, so many of the things that I share from you both come from my technical education, but they also come from my experience working with the body that I have. And part of the reason that I bring that up is because I know that so many yoga teachers can be a little frustrated or down on themselves when they struggle with poses or when they don't have uh, complete range of motion or strength or all the uh, technical skills uh, that they'd like to have. Um, but I don't either and I struggle with those things too and those things have actually become a huge asset for me. So these are my five or six favorite preparations for Hanumanasana for splits. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about where I like to include these postures in a sequence if I'm gonna focus on Hanumanasana. Um, and I also will talk a little bit, everybody, about where I put this stuff. So this is one of my favorite things to do, and it is a version of Supta Padimustasana, reclined leg stretch. I'm actually gonna show you two versions depending on your student's range and flexibility. You do need a belt and you do need a block. So if you don't have these things, you can move on to the next. Um, but I want you to get this set up and kind of understand its dynamic, okay? It's really wonderful. I almost always use this in a Hanumanasana sequence very early on in the preparations phase. This just starts to get the body prepared and it starts to send the uh, neuromuscular pathways so the brain starts to understand the coordination that's gonna happen in Hanumanasana. So it's really simple, everybody. You lay on your back, you have a block, you have a belt. You lift the hips, slide the block underneath the back of the pelvis, the sacrum. You can go on the face, the kind of flattest side, or you can go on the long side, okay? For me, going down on the face is enough, especially because I like to do this early in the sequence. Then I straighten one leg on the ground and I press that heel down. So right now I'm straightening my left leg, my left heel is pressing down. And this is enough to give a very light elongation to the left hip flexors and quads, more the hip flexors than quads. So I don't want that bottom knee to bend and I don't want the heel to get light. That's gonna take the stretch off. I want that straight and heavy. Then I take the right leg up with the belt, Supta Padangustasana, okay? And so this again, it's really simple, but you can envision, if you're watching this, you can visualize and see this as a very early preparation for Hanumanasana. And the thing that's nice about being on the block is because that's elevating my pelvis, it's taking the bottom leg into greater extension. You can even take the leg out to the side. You can do the full Supta Padangustasana sequence here, the full three-part series here, um, can be really nice on that block. You don't just have to do this first phase. But now, the second way to do the same pose, but has a much, much more overt demand, okay? So we'll do the same setup, but we're actually gonna do it in half Supta Virasana, so Arda Supta Virasana, half reclined hero's pose. So what we do in this situation, everybody, is we sit on the block and we take one leg into Supta Virasana. So I'm taking my left leg into Supta Virasana and I have my belt with me. Now, when I lay back, because I have tighter quads, my knee's gonna lift off the ground. That's okay, I don't wanna force it down. I want that leg to be heavy, but I'm not gonna force it, okay? So from here, I'm gonna lay back so my pelvis, the back of my pelvis, the sacrum, is flat on the block. The left leg is in supta virasana. The knee is elevating because I have tight quads. 
uh, but it's fine for the knee, it's fine for the ankle, it's fine for the lower back if it feels appropriate there. And then from there, leg up, soup the Parangustasana, okay? And everybody, I'm telling you right now, if you personally have not done this, I think you're gonna love it. Most teachers love this. If you even have basic proficiency in Arda Supta Virasana, you are gonna love this variation. You can also take that leg out to the side. So usually what I do, everybody, um, when I'm teaching this is I'll incorporate these two poses early on in the sequence, like the early preparations. We're not gonna stay forever in the pose, we're not gonna go super deep in the pose, but you're taking that bottom leg into extension, you're taking that top leg into flexion, you're getting that good movement of the legs away from each other, and to be honest with you, it's accessible and interesting. And what I will usually do is I'll have everyone start the first round. We'll all do one round with the bottom leg straight. Then I'll show the option for that bottom leg in Virasana. Then we'll do the bottom leg in Virasana, or if that is inaccessible for someone, that you just, then you just repeat the same version you just did. So you'll either do a bottom leg straight round and a bottom leg bent round or two bottom leg straight rounds. Those are really good early preparations. Then another huge part of the body that gets overlooked when we're doing Hanumanasana are the adductors, the inner leg muscles. The adductor muscles do not spend most of their time adducting. They spend most of their time working with the flexors and the extensors. So because in Hanumanasana you have such a strong demand in the front leg for hip flexion and in the back leg for hip extension, your inner leg muscles are a massive component. They are as important to prepare as anything else, everybody. There's a lot of good ways to open up the inner thighs, but for me, my single favorite is wide-legged squat with the forearms on the inner leg. So watch, I'll usually set people up from like a Prasara to Padottanasana. So the place where I'll usually put this, everybody, is in the standing pose flow, right? So we've done that stuff that I just showed early on in a sequence, then we're doing our salutations, our standing poses, we're doing kind of standing pose flows. And then somewhere in these standing pose flows, maybe even a couple of times, we'll get people into a wide-legged standing forward bend, turn their heels in and their feet out at about 45 degrees, drop the hips so that the thighs are about parallel to the floor, and then take the forearms on the inner legs. Now if I'm up here, everybody, if I'm up here, it's not gonna do much, okay? So if I'm more upright and my forearms are on my thighs, I'm missing the target. I wanna be low. So I want my pelvis, my ribs, my shoulders, my head all in the same plane and look where I want my forearms. I don't want my forearms up here, everybody. I want my forearms here. And my hands can be here. And then ever so slightly with my forearms, I'm gently pressing my inner thighs away. And with my inner thighs ever so slightly, I'm squeezing in. So my forearms are pressing my inner thighs, my inner thighs are squeezing my forearms, and my inner leg muscles are stretching, but they're also engaging a little bit in their stretch position, which is really good, because that's, that's kind of what we want to do in Hanumanasana, which I'll talk about in a moment, okay? That version, Addressing the inner legs is, uh, it's so cliche to say it, but I'm gonna say it, it's a game changer. It is a hugely overlooked element of Hanumanasana development. Now, the fourth thing I'm gonna show you is what I call wide or off-centered Hanumanasana. This is such a good pose, okay? I teach this pose all the time, but I would do this right in the lead up to Hanumanasana or also somewhere in the standing pose flows where we're doing lunges, okay? So watch. Typically what you'll see with any Hanumanasana, right, is it's very linear, it's very straightforward. The right leg is going directly forward, the left leg is going directly back. My legs are parallel to each other, parallel to the side of the mat. I mean this very like, um, 
very straightforward position, no other way to say it, okay? But what I'm gonna show you here is the front leg is gonna be askew, or it's gonna be a little off-centered. So that front leg is gonna go out to the side at about 20 to 30 degrees, okay? So what I do, everybody, is I have everyone come into a lunge, and then I have them turn their foot out so their front foot is facing at about two o'clock, right? About two o'clock. And then both hands are gonna be on the floor inside the front foot. And then the, the angle that the right leg, or whatever your front leg is reaching, it's reaching forward, but it's reaching diagonally out to the side at about 1.30 or two o'clock. Both hands are down on the floor here. You could also, of course, I'm not going through all the details of Hanumanasana itself, because I'm really thinking about giving you good options for preparing your students. But <clears throat> if you can support yourself adequately with that leg out to the side, then if you can get into that situation, right? If you are fully supported, then you can get those arms up in space. But I usually just keep the hands down here, okay? If you are like me, and you like Hanumanasana, I actually love Hanumanasana, but you're a little bit tighter in Hanumanasana, this version is really amazing. It feels great. When that front leg is going a little bit off to the side, your hamstrings on that side are you going to present you with just a little bit less resistance, okay? So you're still gonna be you, you still may have some restricted range of motion, but this is going to give you a little bit more feeling of spaciousness in the pose, okay? Um, my second two or my final two options, everyone, in some ways they're, they're even less about stretching or strengthening things, although they're working relevant components. Now they're a little bit more about working the technique of Hanumanasana in a closely related pose. It's difficult to get some of the details of a hard pose in a hard pose because for many people, there's a higher there are, it's a higher stress environment. So a good teacher is gonna teach you what to do when it gets hard before it's too hard to do it, okay? So what I like to do, next version, next preparation, is pigeon. And honestly, everyone, I don't really care what version of pigeon, but, or what angle the legs are in pigeon, but I want people to get down. And then what I want people to do, everyone, and you have to do this at some point on your own, in your own body to really get this, okay? Especially if you don't regularly practice with me. Once we're in pigeon pose, we want to activate. So what I'm gonna do with my back foot, and you won't really see it, right? Um, but what I'm gonna do with my back foot is I'm gonna press down and I'm gonna create the action of shortening my leg. So what I mean by that is I'm pressing down through the top of my back foot and I'm creating the action with that back foot of pulling in the direction of the hip joint. Now with my front leg, I'm pressing down and pulling towards the back leg. So my front shin presses down and gently pulls towards my back leg. My back foot presses down and gently pulls towards my front leg. It's almost as if everybody, it's almost as if, and use this if you teach this, it's almost as if your legs are trying to scrunch up the yoga mat, okay? Because what I would love is for all of my students to have <clears throat> not just flexibility and strength, but technical acumen. And when you're working in Hanumanasana, you aren't just getting splatted down into the floor. There's a lot of technique here. And some of the most important technique is how we produce resilience in the musculature that is stretching. You don't just wanna have a lot of flexibility, you wanna have strength and control in that flexibility. So I don't teach Hanumanasana disengaged. There's too much demand there. I teach Hanumanasana engaged because we have to have the strength and the control and the dexterity in that amount of range, okay? So getting people to press down with the periphery and hug in 
is really important because then in Hanumanasana, right, then in Hanumanasana, we can be doing the same, right? So in whatever version of Hanumanasana you're working, instead of just getting heavy and low, instead that front heel is pressing down and pulling a little towards the back leg. The back foot's pressing down and pulling a little towards the front leg. What we can do is we can use pigeon to teach the legs what to do in Hanumanasana. So we press down and we hug towards the center line, okay? In Hanumanasana, same thing, back foot presses down, hugs towards front leg, front heel presses down, hugs towards back leg. Now, my final preparation, this is the most obvious one. Like you, this is, I almost didn't include this because it's so obvious. I don't think there's really any novelty to it. But there is one technical dimension that I really like to use in the pose and it's half Hanumanasana, okay? So in half Hanumanasana, the front leg is gonna start straight, the back knee is underneath the back hip or just a little further back and you're on the fingertips. But what I like to do here, everybody, is I have everyone bend the front knee a little bit and then when that front knee is bent, I'm just moving my hand so you can see that it's bent, when that front knee is bent, I have people press the back of the heel into the floor. So my right knee is a little bit bent and the back of my right heel is pressing into the floor. That engages my hamstrings. So now my hamstrings are starting to engage in that stretched position. So I'm building strength and resilience in that flexibility, everybody, okay? So then I keep that engagement of the hamstrings and I bring on the quads, I slowly contract my quads, everybody. So now as I slowly contract my quads, I keep pressing the back of the right heel into the floor. So I'm not just hanging here like flopping over the leg, I'm resilient, okay? I'm pressing that heel down, stretching the hamstrings, engaging them in their stretch position. I'm using that hamstring engagement to, en to remind myself to engage the quads. Because I'll say it again, the demand of Hanumanasana is too big and demanding in my mind to be passive. It's, it, the, there are plenty of things to be passive in, but this is a big shape. There's a lot of leverage there. Your legs are way away from your center. So just being heavy and passive and low, I think interjects a certain vulnerability into the body if we don't have the strength and the resilience and the tone to deal with that range. So I'm always trying to get people to co-create that range and that flexibility in the pose with the strength in the pose. And you can really easily go from, you know, a version of Hanumanasana, Ardha Hanumanasana that I was just showing to now low lunge quad stretch. And that's the last thing that I would put in there, low lunge quad stretch. And these are the final things that I find myself doing right before Hanumanasana. So we have the early preps of the Supta Padangustasana stuff. We have the inner leg adductor opener with the wide footed squat. You can put that in the standing poses and the flows. We have that off angle Hanumanasana that you can also put in the lunges and the standing poses and the flows. And then when you're getting closer to Hanumanasana itself, you can use pigeon. Pigeon is a really good mechanical prep for Hanumanasana, but even more so you can teach the technique of rooting and hugging in for Hanumanasana in pigeon. So people kind of already have a feel for it. And then right before Hanumanasana, everybody, these last two. Okay, check those out, use them, use them to inspire yourself and your practices, share them um, and follow this channel. It is really helpful for me and go to jasonyoga.com. I'd love to see you in a training someday.